Hello YouTube, this is Piss and Moan, and we're bringing you a, not a movie review for a change, but a, a medium form, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with a medium form uh, anime we'll, review. We'll see how much form it actually is by the time yeah. we finish this. Uh, I think we'll try and do a little bit of a short intro, that'll be spoiler freeze, and then we'll get into more of the nitty gritty. Um, but today we're going to be talking about, I may mispronounce this, but Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Yep. Um, it's a, it's a uh, seasonal seasonal anime, I think. I, I don't. Well, we don't know if they're getting any more seasons, but it's it's based on a manga, um, yeah. and yeah, it came out earlier this year, I think. I'm not even sure. Either late last year, or early this year. It's pretty recent. It was pretty popular. Yeah, it was all over everywhere. That's why I ended up watching it. I threw it in my queue, and I'll try this out. It looks like an interesting concept, and it's uh, it's about what I did with. I'm trying to think if I wanted to describe it. It's a, it's a slice of life with a dragon maid. I mean, the name kind of says it all. Girl who, uh, it's a dragon who transforms into a maid for a girl in Japan. Um, personally, I really liked it. Um, I will give a lot of negative feedback once we get to spoilers, but I liked it. Uh, if I had to sum up my description of it, I would say I really liked it. You should watch the first four episodes in the last episode. <laughs> wow uh maybe That's very maybe specific. five but four or five it, it, my basic feedback was i got bored with it um great concept not enough to hold it out for a whole season i hope they don't make another i wouldn't watch it uh, well, but i liked what i got it's pretty it's interesting because reading up on it they actually took some of the content from later on in the manga and brought it into this season to uh pad it so because <laughs> it needed that padding tell, that like that you. like that one lady's boobs needed padding <laughs> uh i would say i enjoyed it very much I, I enjoyed the whole thing i was expecting i was expecting full fan service the uh, naked woman anime protagonist problems oops i tripped and fell into your breasts kind of stuff going on the whole time it wasn't and, that bad about no, that no i was and that's why I was pleasantly surprised. I I enjoyed it. I liked all the characters. And I would recommend watching the whole thing. I'd say I'm it's sure. actually one of the, probably one of the best done, tasteful uh, fan service out there. I think. Um, they they don't focus too much on the fan service. Yeah, it's there. Uh, I don't know. One of the characters is purely fan service, and it really no well. Her interactions with Shoda are all fan service. Okay, so I wouldn't. Let's get into spoilers. Um, I once again, For, I re we, rec we recommend it. Good, go ahead and watch it. He doesn't recommend I, everything. I give it, a, I give it an above average rating. Like of the anime I've watched, I enjoyed it. Um, especially if you cut it short, I. But the last episode is great. It's a great conclusion to the series. So I, I, I highly recommend seeing the last episode, even if you skip a few in the middle. You, you, there's not exactly anything you'll miss. Yeah, it's it's not like there's a running plot line or anything. It's yeah, very much slice of life bits and pieces. Hell, they've got skits that last 10, 15 seconds that go through on third. Uh, of the slice of life things that I've partook in, I'd say this is the closest to what we have in America for like uh, sitcoms, where it's a situational comedy. Uh, it's very much a cast of characters. Once you have everyone, it's literally just putting those characters in scenarios and. It's Seemingly funny. It's, yep. it's it's all about the characters and situations, not about the plot. So now that we're on that spoilers, we're on the spoilers. All right. I hated the depth that pretty much all the characters had. Really? I felt so many were so one dimensional. Uh, outside of Miss Kobia Kobayashi, okay. I in barely the dragon maid. Toru. Toru, thank you. I I. There was, like, Toru had development for the first few episodes, then she basically sat static while Miss Kobayashi evolved, but there was so little focus on any of them as personalities. It was so much what trope are they and playing on that mm -hmm. trope. Even Kana, the little girl? Especially Kana, the little girl. Really? I hated the freaking uh, gym... Not gymnastics, but the, uh, the, school the school competition. You hated that? Yes, and I hate her relationship with that little girl. <laughs> that's where that's definitely where it got a little over the top for me was the other girl being so overly 
head over heels in love with her. That was weird. I don't. I, I, I was fine with the concept. I actually liked it. I felt that was some good development for her and her interaction with that. But that was it. Like, that was my case with so much of it. It was like, oh, this is an interesting interaction. Oh, my God. Actually do something with it as opposed to, oh, every single time. And and that's the part that bugged me. It's like, okay, yeah, we get it. She likes her. Exactly. And that was my opinion of, uh, I can't remember her name, Big Boob Lady. Uh, Kitsukotl. Whatever. Quas- Quasicotl? Yeah. Whatever. Uh, whatever her, that's pronounced. Luoka. Whatever her. Oh, sorry. Is. Quick, before we get into her, cool. the one character I take it back for that I really Fafnir? enjoyed his character and his progress was Fafnir. Yeah. I really fun. liked him. He was probably my character character in the whole show, except for maybe Miss Kobayashi. But Quasicotl was mm. so flat. And it was frustrating because yeah. there was something <laughs> <Flat>. there. <laughs> yeah, right? It, she was a character that was entirely based around her boobs. And I it's, don't mean that as like a uh, like oh this is just uh, I all I care about is her fan service no like that's all she was as a character there was so little depth to her well and I, I think that was kind of the point is she wasn't the focus because she she had a character there and she specifically went out of her way to not tell people and interrupt people when they were going to talk yeah about and that was frustrating for me because it meant every scene she was in I could sum up in the first five minutes of her actual appearance in the story. She never changed from those five minutes of her introduction. She was always, look at me, I'm wearing clothes that are not appropriate for these excessively large boobs, and I am excessively sexualized towards this little child. That's her character, and it never... Pretty much. I mean, it is all about... The the show is Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Man. Yeah. It's about... Kobayashi and Toru, but... Yeah, and that's where it excelled, honestly, but, like, there was things in that, too, where they never did anything fun in that interaction past the first few episodes, once again. Like, I was so sick of her trying to slip her dragon meat. I just got so bored with that. It was the same thing over and over again. It didn't... It didn't add anything past, like, the first few times. I mean, a callback can be really funny, uh, in comedy, but it just did. None of the callbacks in this did it for me because I felt they were so ham-handed and heavily used. Except for Fafnir, loved Fafnir, <laughs> and his relationship. He had some of the best interactions with his uh, housemate. I can't remember his name, yeah. but the the Lolly yeah. Khan wasn't here. No, what was his name? Yeah. What was he called? I don't remember his name. He was a closet something or another. The, the maid, lo- uh, maid lover, the closet maid lover. Maid lover. Yeah. <laughs> well, everyone in the damn show is maid lover. Kobayashi, the girl's older sister. I was also a little uncomfortable with the uh, amount of alcoholism that Miss Kobayashi seemed to demonstrate. I don't think that's actually that uncommon in anime. Yeah. It, and maybe I'm just getting overly dramatic I, about an over-exaggeration of a characteristic. Wow. You haven't seen Evangelion yet, but there's some who's way worse than her in Evangelion. <laughs> and she's my favorite character. There's a character like that in Fairy Tale that's just always, like, her thing is having a full keg of beer with her everywhere she goes. <laughs> and just, <laughs> that's what she drinks from. So maybe I'm being overly dramatic about that. But I was really <laughs> uncomfortable with the relationship with Quetzalcoatl and the little boy. I didn't, I wasn't quite okay with that. Uh, just like as a parent it wasn't cool with that relationship well uh, they didn't again they didn't go into much developing with them because the show wasn't about them I mean they they spent a lot more time on Fafnir than they really did on yeah. any of the others and I, and I think that would be what happens if they move forward as they would spend more and more time on each I, character so if I had my way I would have removed Quetzalcoatl and I would have removed uh the the last chick the uh, Elma. lightning lightning girl I believe Elma was her Elma name. Uh, they were both characters I felt added nothing to the to the slice of life of this they 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 were walking tropes that were not with no the, depth Elma was there specifically to upset Toru and Kobayashi's relationship and I mean she did it, just, oh, good job. It, no it it didn't work very well it er, it didn't last very long the kids they had about the one scene where Toru gets jealous and if they had played on that I feel they could have done that well there was some potential there for that kind of relationship of Miss Kobayashi not Miss Kobayashi but sorry but Toru dealing with jealousy and Miss Kobayashi dealing with 
a possessiveness that's not hers. I felt that there was some depth they could add there. And that's and that's what I'd argue for Kana too. Is Kana was entirely all about Ms. Kobayashi taking on the adult responsibilities of raising a child. Well, it's it's all about developing Kobayashi, not about. I did like that, and that's why I'm saying like, I didn't like the interaction of Kana with. Uh, I didn't like it when they focused on her. I liked it when they focused on Miss Kobayashi with well, yeah. like the stuff they did. Um, spoilers free or spoilers full here. So uh, the way they played that relationship at the end, that balance of dealing with her and being a full time working mother, especially without without Toru being there and how she has to. That her. was heart wrenching. Mm-hmm. I like that's why I said when I said in my in the, the beginning like watch the first five episodes and the last one. Because the, the end is phenomenal. How they they do that bit was great. They really did that tastefully and well and really pulled up the heartstrings well. And that progression of to, this is degrading and degrading and then getting someone else involved. Well, because and... can you imagine if she'd never came back? I mean... Yeah. She would have probably given up the girl and kind of had her go live with uh, her friend. I Well, I don't know. I doubt it. Honestly, that's what she should have done. She couldn't do it by herself, is how it was portrayed to me. And not saying that, like... Well, I, th- I in, mean, now we're, getting, well, now we're getting into the realm of theoretical. But I think it was good for Kobayashi to have Kana there when Toru wasn't. Yeah. So she had something to keep her focused. Well, and, and, to, I think, and it made her appreciate Toru more. Uh, that was... So, I don't have experience with uh, single parenthood. I'm a married parent... And I was come from a married parent household, but it, it, I think it did a really good job, tastefully, kind of giving that what it's like to kind of be a single parent abruptly and the difficulties in it. Being a parent, it really tugged at my heartstrings because I I fear being in that situation and how hard that would be. One day you come home and there's no one there. In the struggles, oh, so much respect for. Those that have to deal with that. And so much respect for how they tastefully handled this. Handled that in this story. Great finishing episode. And I liked that they were open and clear about the fact that Miss Kobayashi's in it because she's selfish. She wants Toru back. And I like that Mm because it's honest. It's not because... Oh, I'm a better person with her. She's better with me. It's like, no, I want her. I love her. And you can't take her from me. I've got dibs. Thank you. I liked that. It was something, I don't know, I could relate to. Because <laughs> there are definitely parts I liked. Through. I, I liked the dodgeball game. I liked the dragon dodgeball. It was fun. I, I liked uh, Kana and Toru's fight in the field. And, yeah. And then, I did feel that the uh, the final battle between Dad and her was pretty... Well, it's because there really wasn't one. And I, I think that was the point, too. But, but the, their play fighting was significantly more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that was where it excelled when they, sorry for the shaking, they really explored that dragon and character. And character. Yeah, the, the the interplay between what's it like to be a human in this world versus a human in a world where dragons exist. I still hold that. They had kept the cast to Miss Kobayashi, Toru, uh, Kana? Kana. Kana and uh, Fafnir and her co-worker. In about the ratio that they had it, Maybe with less kind of, kind of focus. Yeah, less kind of focus. I think it would have been much better because they they could. There's a lot more they could explore in there. But if my had to give my conclusion, they had a sitcom where they didn't have enough ideas for interesting situations, so they just kept adding more characters and focusing <laughs> on more people. But they're not interesting. Not well enough. Yep. Yeah. Not well enough developed. They're good side characters, not good characters. Don't focus on them. And they, yeah, well, because I want to know more about Quetzalcoatl's drinking accident and what led her to be no longer a goddess. Because that stuff's interesting, but they yeah, cover it up. No, not at all. No, none of that. That would be too much actual character. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know in the second, because uh, I know in the second manga they add a an evil dragon who is specifically there to destroy the world and take Kobayashi for herself to go up against Toru. So I'm interested to see how mm, that would That work. would be an interesting... I'm, I am I really hope it does get a second season, because I'd, I'd watch it. Oh, I, I was struggling so hard to finish this series. I really do not want another one. I, I got to episode 6, 
and just kind of forced myself to finish the, se the season. Which is not what I was expecting because I was really enjoying it. And then I stopped for and like tapered off. three days and I watched oh. the next episode and it was just, ugh. Like it, w it wasn't like a gradual decline. It was just, I am no longer interested in this <laughs> at all. Until the final episode. I Good thing you stuck there. Oh, I keep forgetting the name of the, the anime. I keep telling you, you need to watch. The Konosuba? Konosuba. Um, I actually relate this very similarly to Konosuba because Konosuba is a very similar concept. It's a number of ridiculous tropes and then just kind of slice of life. That's how I put it, at least. I think it's slice of life. Uh, but they do a fantastic job of keeping the the situations new, interesting, and taking these pretty one-dimensional tropes and making use of them and expanding on them and making them in situations where it challenges them and changes. It, it's it's well done. It's It did not run into this situation in the middle. I'm not done with the show yet, but I'm in season two, and I'm still loving it. So it beat Miss Kobayashi for me. I've got two other shows to get through before I get to that one. So I'm watching Toradora next. Good. I think we've kind of veered off trail here. I think we're pretty much set. <laughs> I think it's... Uh... I think it's about time that I don't offer any advice to anybody. I'm glad I watched this, though. It was, a. Uh, am expanding my, my palate. Um, that, well, and, I mean, I was definitely looking for something lighthearted as a follow-up to... Uh, I don't remember which I watched before this, but it was something It's heavy. probably No Game, No Life. <laughs> no, I... Well, I watched... Kobe has Dragon Maid, No Game, No Life, and then I went back to Dragon Maid again. <laughs> But <laughs> uh, I think oh, that's we'll all we got, that though. Any uh, words of wisdom for the viewers? Nope.